Well, good evening and welcome to another Spirit Life broadcast. Boy, I'll tell you, the Lord is so good. His mercy endures forever. And we're just so grateful uh, to live in these last days. Amen. To be able to witness of the goodness of God. You know, so many people need to hear how good God is and that he's a restorer. Amen. He's a God who reconciles. He's a God who heals. He's the God who delivers. Amen. He's the God who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You need to claim that tonight. You need to say, my youth is being renewed just like the eagles. The, the healing anointing of Almighty God, Jehovah Rapha, is one with me, and I'm drinking the sweet waters that only Jehovah Rapha can give. Amen. Glory to God. He's your Savior. He's your Lord. Amen. He's your healer. He's your Heavenly Father. And everything that you need. Remember when Moses, he, he went to the Lord and he said, uh, Now Pharaoh's going to ask me, <laughs> who is sending me? And the Lord says to uh, Moses, he says, You tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. Whatever my people need me to be, that I am. So we praise God tonight that he is our glory and the lifter of our head. Amen. And whatever you need tonight, your Savior has it for you. We're going to start off with the uh, communion as we always do. Uh, we do discern the Lord's body, the, the, the bread that represents his his broken body that was broken for our healing, uh, the cup which represents his blood which was shed for the forgiveness of sins and for our divine protection. It was said of old, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the works of destruction, the works of the destroyer will not destroy you. And so we thank God uh, that his body and his blood was sacrificed for us. Jesus was our burnt offering. Amen. And the promise of old was he would bless their bread and water, take sickness from the midst of them because he's the Lord that heals. Amen. So I want you to receive uh, your forgiveness tonight. Amen. Receive your healing tonight. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I believe I've received healing which has been covenanted to me in Jesus Christ. Tumors, get out of my body. Hypertension, get out of my body. Diabetes, get out of my body. All manner of sickness, disease, cancer, get out of my body. My body's for the Lord, and the Lord is for my body, and the Lord is raising me up as the testimony of his grace. To God be the glory. Great things he, has, he is doing for me and for my family. Amen. You believe that? You receive that? Let's commune tonight prayerfully together. The bread first, and then the cup. Jesus said in John 50 and John 6, 53, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinks my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Why? For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. 
This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? Are you offended at these words? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus told his disciples, you have to be covenanted to me. You have to be one with me. You eat my flesh, you drink my blood, my blood. you are one with me. And he told his disciples, he said, do these words offend you? Does it offend you that I'm calling you to be all in? He says, remember this, my words are spirit and they are life. They have the ability to transcend the natural realm. They, they have the ability to touch heaven and to cause things in the earth to be are in heaven. And so we understand uh, that we have the privilege of calling on the name of Jesus. We have the privilege of being one with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6 talks about he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. We've been joined unto the Father through the blood and the very the precarious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We've been joined unto the Lord and we are one with him tonight. Amen. So if the devil's telling you any different, if you're far from God, he's not hearing your prayers, you know, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you, and you've named the name of Jesus Christ, you've called upon the name of the Lord, amen, and you are saved. If any of those voices are trying to uh, talk to you tonight, uh, <laughs> you say what, Peter said, what Jesus said to Peter, and, and Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Remember, uh, Peter didn't want Jesus to go to the cross, and uh, Jesus was, was talking to his disciples about how he would have to go up and, and suffer and, and give his life as a ransom, amen, for humanity. And uh, Peter said, not so, Lord. And Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. But you know what? Peter didn't get all messed up and offended. He just kept on following Jesus, amen, and his end was divine. Amen. So you just keep on following Jesus and tell those voices of distraction, those voices of discouragement, those voices of doom and gloom to get behind you. Amen. And you hold on to God's unchanging hand. Malachi 3 and 6 says, uh, the Lord said to, to those uh, people in that day, he says, I'm the Lord and I change not. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Your God changes not. He's with you today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. Until you see Jesus, the promise of God is he'll never leave you nor forsake you so that you can boldly say, the Lord is your helper. Amen. Well, let's turn over here to Matthew chapter 15 uh, tonight. And we're looking at the the Syrophoenician woman, and uh, we're, we're, we're looking at it as a subject tonight. Uh, we're dealing with the, the covenant of healing. You know, God made a covenant with his people that uh, he would bless their bread and water and take sickness uh, out of the midst of them so that the number of their days would be uh, fulfilled. And so we thank God that we have that, that covenant uh, with him. Uh, he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals us. Amen. And we thank God for his healing power tonight. 
uh, that's working. Amen. He's the almighty God and he is worthy of all the honor and the praise and the glory. I just want that, that verse has been on my lips today. So I just want to um, uh, look at that verse uh, tonight and uh, <clears throat> make it uh, clear that he blesses our bread and he blesses our water and he promises to take sickness from the midst of us. Amen. Because he is the Lord that heals us. Exodus uh, chapter 23, Exodus 23 and verse 25. Exodus 23 and verse <clears throat> 25. It says, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? The promise is God's going to bless your bread and your water, take sickness from the midst of you. Amen. And the number of your days would be fulfilled. Let's go over here to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, uh, beginning with verse 22. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So uh, this woman, this Syrophoenician woman, uh, this Canaanite woman, comes to Jesus and says, Lord, my daughter is, <laughs> she is either demon-possessed uh, or demonically harassed. Either way, uh, she is uh, just messed up, and uh, I need your help. And uh, the word of God says in verse 23, but he answered her, not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. You know, uh, you know, when you're believing God, and, you know, when you are endeavoring to uh, come into your healing or, or come into a, a promise uh, that you so desperately need from God. And we understand this. We understand that God's promises reveal his nature. His promises reveal his nature. Amen. He is a healing. Healing is his nature. You know, restoration is his nature. You know, reconciliation is is his nature. Uh, forgiveness is his nature. Psalms 103, uh, uh, I believe it's verse uh, 2 or verse 3, it says, uh, Psalms 103 and 3, it says that, that he forgives all of our iniquities and he heals all of our diseases. That, that's the nature of God. You know, that that's the very heart of God. And so uh, this woman says, and she's using uh, one of the phrases that only God's people would use. Uh, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. That, that's a, uh, a, a, a phrase that God's people at that time would use. And, and, and Jesus knows that she is not an Israelite. Uh, he knows that she is not a part of of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so he, he, he doesn't say anything to her. But you know what? She persists on. You know, God loves persistence. And uh, it says, he answered her not a word. And then the disciples didn't help any. She hears the disciples tell him, send her away. You know, <laughs> you know oh boy. Can you imagine that nowadays? You know? Someone comes to the house of God and says, you know, Pastor, you know, I, I, I'm looking for my healing. And, uh, you know, the pastor says nothing. <laughs> and at the same time, the deacons and the ministers say, send her away. Woo! That's offensive. But she doesn't get offended. You know, when you really believe in God, you put those offenses away. You, you get the feelings from off your sleeves. <laughs> 
You wipe them off and you say, you know what? I'm here to do business with the Almighty and I'm not going to be offended. And it says in verse 24, uh, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, this would be an emphatic no for so many people. Jesus tells her, Sister, it's not your time. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't come at this time uh, for anyone outside of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus, I've come to restore prodigal Israel. I've come to restore my father's people. And uh, uh, it says that she came after hearing that. She could have said, okay, Lord, all right, I get it. You know, it's not my time. I guess uh, my daughter just won't see this miracle. I'll just be one of the have-nots. But uh, that's not what the word of God says. It says, uh, verse 25, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. You know, it says in Psalms, of 22 and verse 3, that God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, talks about in Psalm 100, we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. But uh, it says here, she worshiped him. You know, after we praise God and his presence, his presence begins to manifest. Uh, now, we worship. But, you know, this woman, I tell you, she wasn't a slouch. She knows she's in the presence of the Almighty. She knows that she's in the presence of God's Son. She knows that she's in the presence of help. She's in a good place, even though she has heard him say that it's not your time. You know, it's, it, it's, it's not the place. She just worships him. She deserves, this is Jesus the Christ. And she just worships. She just worships. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. But I know you're the healer. And I know I'm not of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But I know you are the healer. Your testimony precedes you. I've heard, and, and faith comes by hearing. I know I'm in the right place, I'm at the right time, and I'm in front of the right person. And even though she's heard Jesus say, I've not said to you, woman, she says, he's the healer. He's the one I need. And so she worships him. You know, praise is the language of faith. But after you praise and, 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 and thank the Lord, for who he is and, 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 and what he does and how faithful he is and, and how true he is to his word. Then you need to linger and just worship him. You need to just stand in his presence and, and thank him for being such a mighty God, such a, a kind God, such a compassionate God, such a loving Savior. Amen. We, you need to worship him and thank him that he's oh so willing. Ah, and I believe this woman is tapping into his nature. Lord, I know you haven't come for me, but it's your nature to heal. It's just like you to restore. It's just like you to deliver. Glory to God. You can't deny yourself. And uh, the word of God says she just worships him. And she just worships him. But things get worse for her. He says in verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not me, it is not right for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dog. Now, you know, church is over now. She's going to go. She's going to go out and tell everybody, you know that Jesus, he's not compassionate. He called me a dog in the midst of my worship. I'm trying to worship him. He tells me, hey, look, you're a dog, you might as well get to moving. And she says something profound. She says, 
truth, Lord. You know, faith is built on truth. You know, faith is built on truth. Faith is built, I'm going to say that again. Faith is built on the truth. She says, you know what? You're right, Lord. I'm a dog. You know, you've got all these uh, uh, wonderful services going on. I heard about it. I heard about you feeding the 5,000. I heard about you feeding the 4,000. I heard about you opening the blind eyes and causing the lame to walk. And, uh, uh, the, uh, I, I've heard even about the main people who had no eyes, no legs, no arms, receiving at your meetings. And I didn't come anywhere around. I did not seek you out until trouble came to my house. That's right. I'm a dog. But even the dogs can eat the little crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus says, Woo! Woman, great is your faith. You have stood here in the midst of me telling you that my ministry is not for you. I haven't come for you. And you said in the midst that even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And look what he says. He says, then Jesus answered her and said, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as you want it. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Whatever you want, it's going to be unto you the way you want it. You want your daughter delivered? It's going to be done unto you the way that you want it. Glory to God. Amen. I'm speaking to someone tonight. God says it's going to be, uh, don't be offended. Don't be offended. Don't put your praise away. Keep your praise on. Keep your worship going on. And don't, don't belittle the circumstances. The circumstances are saying no. But Jesus still has a virtue that is tailor-made for you tonight. Don't let the circumstances run you away. Keep your praise going. Tell God how wonderful he is. Call the name of Jehovah Ropha, glorious and victorious. Amen. Give God back his word. He loves to hear his word. He loves you uh, talking to him about how great his, his son Jesus is, how great your Savior is. Tell the Father, Father, I thank you that Jesus is my healer. Oh, that he is my burden bearer. Oh, that he's the one who's forgiven all my sins and, he, and he's healed me from all sickness and disease. And, and Father, I believe this too will pass. And I thank you that in your presence, is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore, and I'm just going to enjoy your presence until all these circumstances, all these situations that are against me are completely dissolved by the glory of your presence. Jesus tells the woman, be it unto you, whatever you want, <laughs> what do you want? Whatever you want, it's yours. Go in peace. Amen. Your daughter is delivered. Isn't the Lord so wonderful? Amen. His mercy endures forever, and he desires to make us every whit whole. Glory to God. Uh, it says in the, um, Isaiah 53, it says that, Surely he bore our sicknesses, talking about Jesus, and he carried our pains. Amen. He bore our sicknesses, and he carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. You know, the word iniquity means serpent-like ways. Serpent-like ways. That, that, that means you, you, you went out the house this morning with a praise on your lips and, uh, you know, you, 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 you just, you know, purposed in your heart. 
that everything was going to be God's way and you were going to, uh, you know, walk in the center of his will today and, 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 and before lunchtime, uh, you know, uh, gotten some type of altercation and, and uh, just went totally against what you really in your heart wanted to do. Serpent like that. That he was wounded for our transgression. And he was bruised. The word bruised means deadly blows. He, he received deadly blows for our serpent-like ways. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Talks about in the book of Luke that, uh, that he uh, began to sweat great drops of blood. Luke 22, 44. You know, the anxiety, the weight of our sins were so heavy on Jesus, his perspiration became literal drops of blood. You know, it's pretty warm out uh, these days. You, know, you go outside without any air conditioning, and, you know, it's, it's easily to perspire. And the hotter it is, you know, the more we can sweat. But it says in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was heavy and he told the Father, if it be possible, let this cup, let this sin debt that I have to pay for the sins of the world, let it pass over me. And the humanity side of him just begins to be in anguish. He was in, he, he took our anxiety. In, in great drops of blood as his perspiration. Our chastisement, our peace, the chastisement of our peace, our peace was in jeopardy. But with his stripes, we are healed and we are raised up. You know, persist in your healing tonight. Amen. Persist in your healing tonight. You know, take that take that communion, to eat that flesh and drink the blood. Amen. Partake of your covenant. Amen. And then be, begin to pursue the scriptures. Pursue the scriptures. And do not let the circumstances uh, hinder you from moving into what God has for you. You know, I mean, it, it could have been easy for this woman to say, Jesus himself told me it was not my time. Then on top of that, I'm trying to worship him. And he interrupts my worship and calls me a dog. I can hear her now through my sanctified imagination. I can hear her now saying, oh, but I knew I was in his presence. And when I looked in his eyes, oh, I saw eyes of love. And, and when I looked at his hands, I saw hands of compassion, hands that had healed the sick, that had touched the sick, had touched the multitudes and made them whole. And so I decided to just belittle what he was saying and stay in his presence. And I'm so glad because my family is back together again. Woo! Nothing like the Lord to put things back together the way they should be. Amen. Isaiah 53, uh, 4 and 5, the word there uh, means to cure. The word heal means to cure, uh, to make whole, and to heal. And then uh, Matthew picks it up in Matthew 8, 17. And he picks up what Isaiah was saying. And, you know, Isaiah prophesied these words just for 600 years before uh, the Messiah, before Jesus walked on the earth. Isaiah prophesied 600 years that he would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And that he would be wounded for our transgressions. That he would be bruised for our iniquities. That the chastisement of our peace would be upon him. 
And Matthew 8, 17 says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. He said that uh, Malachi 3 and 6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. He still, he is still your healer today. Psalms 103 and 3. He forgives all thine iniquities and he heals all thy diseases. Amen. Uh, uh, Exodus 23 and 25. He blesses your bread and water. He's the one who takes sickness out of your body that the number of your days would be fulfilled. And then Numbers 21. Numbers 21, verses 8 and 9. Numbers 21. Somebody needs to hold on tonight. Somebody needs to hold on tonight. Somebody needs to be steadfast tonight. Somebody needs to keep on plowing in hope. Amen. Stay in the word of God. Amen. Put those uh, earphones on. And let the scriptures play in your ears. Glory to God. There is a good report that has your name on it. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Amen. Numbers 21, verses 8 and 9. The Lord said to Moses, uh, make a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looks upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass. You know, that's the, the red cross. You know, that's, that's that seal, that, that, uh, that emblem of, of the serpent around the pole, you know, that you see in the medical field. They got that out of the book of Numbers. Amen. And um, Moses makes this serpent of brass. And... Uh, and it says, it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. <laughs> now, uh, the serpent represents the sin nature. Amen. And uh, it was wrapped on a pole of brass. And, 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 and what, 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 what uh, God was telling Moses, when they looked upon that serpent, acknowledging the sin nature that had caused them to miss the mark, come short of the glory of God, and murmur and complain after their great deliverance. If, if they would look to that uh, serpent up there on that pole, they would live. They would be healed. And then it says in uh, John 3 and 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, amen, we are to lift up Jesus. He said, and if he would be lifted up, he would draw all men to himself. But my point is, you know, God had them look to the serpent, gaze upon the serpent. And I want to share this with you, you know, when you're looking for your healing. Uh, because we know we already are, so it's it's it's, it's for us, you know. It's, 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 I consider healing and the promises of God like, uh, say you have your keys, you came in your house, you know you brought the keys in the house, and uh, now all of a sudden you can't find your keys. Sound like I've done this many times, but you know it's in the house, so you know it, you say to yourself, okay. You know, if I gotta if I gotta search this house over and over again, I know the keys are in here. Now, I used to spend time, you know, going upstairs and downstairs and all. Now I just start praising God and thanking God. He knows where it is, and you know, I tell you that will expedite your time. But uh, you know, the keys are in the house. Amen. You know, healing belongs to you. You know, the promises of God are yours. So what do you need to do? You need to just add to your faith. You need to just continue to gaze upon the scriptures. It says that they looked upon that pole, as they, as they looked on that serpent, as they gazed on that serpent, they were forgiven and all was well. Healing came into them. You keep gazing on the word. And we all have our different ways, you know, 
we approach God, you know, uh, I love just to read the word and it just seems like a, uh, the scriptures just come off the page. And I know that's for me. <laughs> it just seems like that verse will float up and I'll say, that's mine. And then, so he said, well, what do you do? You know, I, I've had the scriptures come off the page, but yet I'm still yet to receive. You got to milk the scriptures. Amen. You got to put it in you. Now, God's giving you your word. Now you need to pray on it. You need to say it. Amen. You need to meditate on it. You need to get it on the inside of you. Amen. Until it bears witness with your heart. With your reborn spirit. Until you're looking at that thing in your spirit. Not just with your physical eyes. Not just with your faculties. But your heart is looking right into the word of God. And I tell you. Once that scripture dawns on your heart. Once that day dawn and that day star manifests. I'll tell you. The miracle. The promise of God will manifest in your life. So you keep listening, amen. You get that rainbow word. You hear the spirit of God telling you it's yours. And then watch and look. You say, well, uh, Pastor Gates, I, I've never had that happen to me. Well, you just say the word, amen. You, you take the logos and stay with that logos, amen. Stay with what is written, amen. And God will call that, that word to manifest in your life. You just stay with it. Tonight, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, stay with my word. Don't deviate from the left or to the right. Don't be weary in well-doing. Every testing has a, a, a time of expiration. There is an expiration date with your name on it. But you stay with the word of God. You stay with the praise of God. You stay with the worship of God. And watch the promise of God work on that prophet. Amen. Put the truth on the fact. The fact is that your body's hurting right now. The fact is you need restoration in your home. The fact is that your finances need to be resurrected. But you put the truth on that fact and let it stay there. And it's going to turn that fact into another fact that lines up with the truth. Amen. And when the two become one, your answer will be so sweet. Amen. And your mouth will be satisfied with his goodness and cause your youth to be renewed. Just like the eagles. Well, we still have more scriptures, but my time is up. And I thank you so much for yours. Remember, Sunday morning at uh, 10 a.m., we're out in the parking lot. This is something the Lord told me to do. And I can't, you know, ever since you told me that, you know, we've had wonderful weather every Sunday. Oh, I just thank God. I said, it might rain Sunday night, I mean, when, uh, Saturday night. But I'll tell you, that sun will come out in the morning. Or, or there's been times it was cloudy Sunday morning. But hey, it didn't rain until the afternoon or late evening. God is so good. Amen. Why don't you come out and join us uh, this Sunday morning. You just stay in your car. Amen. Put something comfortable on. Uh, I believe we gave out water ice last Sunday. It's cold water. You know, it's not long. And uh, just come and fellowship with us. Enjoy the Lord. You know, the presence of God is in that park. You know, people say, well, you know, I don't know about being in the car. The Lord not getting your car. <laughs> I tell you, he, he, is, he is saturating that atmosphere with the glory of his presence. Amen. Come on out. Amen. And enjoy the feast of the Lord that's going on here at Spirit Life Ministries. 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard, right in the heart of Wilmington, Delaware. Lord bless you tonight. And remember, the word works. You have a covenant of healing, and it belongs to you.